Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and Mother Home Energies. I'll these with. I'll show you how to find the exact center. As you can see on this one, I can spin this and it is in balance and it's also the exact center. This is the first part of building your Sterling engine. First of all, what we need to do is to get two cans. You want to find one can that fits in here like that close. The closer the better. The less air on the side that you see down here, the less air on the side, less air is wasted in the performance or the more efficiency you're going to have. The diameter of your can plus the height that you're going to make your uh, displacer at tells you how much air you're going to be working with. Like on this one, let's see if I can do this right. One, two. That comes with practice, trust me, I've done a few. First time I did that took me like eight or nine tries. But when I pull this up, you'll see the distance between here tells me how much air, which is pretty much the equivalent of here. This is what's going to be expanding and contracting. Any waste on the side is air that doesn't quite pull into the function of the Stirling engine. Having it completely to the sides wouldn't do it. But anyway, Here's a good way to find the center. You take a nail or a screw or something that's pretty close to the deal. See right here, this doesn't quite make it to the middle. I'm going to expand it out. This is sharp because I broke it off. Whoops. I take this bottom part to here and I, and I come across here like this and I turn it. This is either going to, or I can just go like this, doesn't matter. You're going to find out that by doing this, it's scratching it. You can tell by the light, this all intersects in one little spot right there. That's your exact center. What you should do is take a piece of coat hanger and file it till you get a nice little point, set her down, and tap it till it just barely goes through. Once you've got the hole started, you're done with that. You're going to do the same thing for the other piece that you stick on the other side, which on this one here, I used the bottom of one of them larger tuna fish cans. I did the same thing. You can see the scratches on this. That's how I found my center. I always find them that way. This one you don't have to because it's the bottom, the rod goes through it, but, oops, wrong can. This one here, I had to find the center on it. And you'll see on this one, take my glasses off, use my real peripheral, there we go. That comes with practice, I say. First time you'll do it, it'll take you a few minutes. You'll see this spins evenly. That is very important. That keeps this from touching the sides and, and doing this. Very close tolerance, but actually a loose tolerance, but close for something that you don't want to touch. I'll show you this. Okay. See this coat hanger, if you look down it, you'll see that it's pretty straight. But if you look on it, you'll actually see a bunch of little ripples. You can feel them with your hand when you slide your finger down. It kind of does a little wavy thing like this. This is not a very good coat hanger, even though it is straight. One of the best ones, I always figured, is these ones covered with paper. You'll notice nothing is hung on this to stretch it. Look down, there's usually no ripples. You've got a little bit of a bend. You can take care of that there. Some of it's due to a bend here. Sometimes you have to break it off here and find out. But if you do a soft bend to get them straight, let's see if that's straight to me. There we go. That's what you look for, and that's how you bend it. Remember, it's made of a steel or 
pretty heavy deal. If you take your finger right up against it here, and go back and forth with the other, try to keep this piece straight as possible. Go back and forth, break her off. Now the tension's off, you can look down her and you find out that's pretty straight. This end off. There we are. I don't want anybody to hurt themselves. I'll show you how to sharpen this a very nice way. You can use a grinding wheel, but it's going to make the end soft. It's going to make the end soft. Picture the angle here. That's what you want to do. A little hard to push at first, so you pull and you turn it. Give it a twist as you pull. That'll get it nice and round. And you're not putting enough pressure on this to give it any bends. And we're going to mess up the operation of your Sterling engine. You'll tap that right into the end here. I'll break it off short. Now just tap it with a hammer until she goes in. Okay, and another thing to note while choosing a coat hanger, you notice that the paint on this is a rather thick paint. You really don't want any paint on it. Do not sand this. This is a real fine, thin enamel. If you look at the reflection on it, you can see the metal through it. That's very thin. That's like the enamel wire that you use uh, when you're winding motors. Real thin, but it's tough. You really don't need to sand this off or use, if you really want to, you can use uh, some lacquer thinner or uh, some acetone. Acetone works real good, but do not sand it off. You sand it off, it's going to get rough. On this one here, I've got it clean pretty much up to here just from sliding it back and forth inside the hole because the hole is very tight. Now, I'm going to take this off. When you slide this through the hole, when you finally get it down to where it will actually slide through the hole, if you'll take it, this is straight at you, if you'll take it at just a little bit of an angle, just that much, and the same thing evenly all the way around, That'll widen your hole just enough for this to slide freely. Trying to make your hole bigger with something else is going to get, it's going to make a lot of air escape because we're trying to get this real close. When I wiggle this back and forth, it doesn't rattle, but it's still free to spin. Tolerances on that is very important. So here we are with this. We see the lines that go across and meet to the perfect center. That's what we're going to aim for on this. For this one spot, I don't want a long piece because I'm going to tap with this. I want to drive this in there with small taps. You don't need a big hammer. You need something that puts vibration to it. Vibration does a lot more. Matter of fact, a spoon will do wonderfully. find my exact center. When I turn this I can see all the lines in the light matching up to it. I don't know if you can, but all these lines will come right across to my point. Now that I've got my point there, take your spoon or whatever. Whoops, I slipped. Move. Find my spot. That's my point right there. Yes, that's it. important you hit like this to the side or something like that. It's going to make the top go this way and the bottom go that way. So hit in the center of the wherever it rides in the spoon. And when you tap down, put a little pressure with your thumb. It helps, it helps it to go. The less of an angle it takes in an even circle to get this to slide through, the better. You see, that's still pretty tight. When the enamel wears off of this, she'll slide very, very freely. Mm -hmm.